Enzymes and their inhibitors are all over the MCAT, and one of the easiest questions associated with those topics is also one of the most missed. Today I'm going to teach you the math around michaelis minton kinetics so that you never miss one of those questions again. michaelis minton kinetics describes how fast an enzyme takes a substrate, does its magic enzyme stuff, and converts it into a product. Remember, all an enzyme does is make a reaction that would naturally occur happen a little bit faster. And sometimes it's a lot of bit faster and it does this by stabilizing the transition state. It's like I tell my wife all the time, she would have fallen for me regardless, but cutting my hair and putting on a little bit of muscle probably sped the process up a good bit. The equation that describes this conversion is called the michaelis minton equation. And it looks like this. The velocity of your enzymes conversion is equal to the maximum velocity times the substrate concentration divided by Km plus the substrate concentration. So if we look at what those exactly are, Vmax is the maximum speed of conversion. So this is how quickly the enzyme could do its job if everything was perfect. V is the speed that you're at. So given the conditions, this is the speed that you are converting product. How many moles per second are being converted? under the conditions that you have. S is the concentration of substrate, and Km is the concentration of substrate at one half V max. And what that means is, it is how much substrate it takes for your enzyme to function at 50% of its capability. So if you look here, I said that V is the speed that you're currently at. And I also use the wrong your. Vmax is the speed that you could be under optimal conditions. Well, if you look closer, you see that the way this equation is organized is that it takes Vmax, so your potential, what you could possibly be if everything went perfect, and it multiplies it times your conditions, which are essentially the substrate and the Km, which is dependent upon that reaction. So your Km is an intrinsic portion of that reaction with that enzyme. And you find the Km by finding how much substrate it takes for your Vmax to function to 50% of its capability. And that means if your Vmax is equal to 100, you want to see how much substrate it takes to get to 50. However much substrate it takes to get to 50, that is equal to your Km. So your Km should be a concentration value. Now your Km is usually seen in the forms of two different types of graphs. You have a michaelis minton graph, which is this hyperbolic curve, and then you have a Lineweaver-Burke plot, which does some fancy inversion stuff with the numbers to make a linear curve. Now they are both depicting the same data. All those are important for the MCAT, but for this specific video, we're just focused on the math. And thankfully, the MCAT usually tests the michaelis minton graphs when they're looking to test the math. Now you do need to have the Lineweaver-Burke plots of the reversible enzymatic inhibitors memorized. But we have a video that gives you some good mnemonics so that you can make those stick once you've learned them. This right here is what a michaelis minton graph will look like. Um, you'll see that this line towards the top will kind of start to level off and it will, what's called, asymptotically approach the Vmax. But what that looks like is just a straight line. So here we can identify the different variables that are in the michaelis minton equation. We can see substrate concentration, obviously, by finding wherever this line intersects and going straight down and saying, oh, well, that's how much substrate I have. And that will work anywhere on the plot. You can find the velocity of the conversion by doing the same thing with the y-intercept, by finding where this line crosses with the y-intercept, just dragging it over to the y-intercept, and that's where you know that you have that much velocity. So putting those two together, you can kind of see that you can formulate how much substrate it takes to go a specific velocity. Now, if you find that velocity, and let's just for the sake of this say that this velocity is 100 and right here is 50, if you find the Vmax and the substrate concentration required to go half of the Vmax, well, guess what you found? You found Km. There you have it. You've got Vmax, you've got your substrate concentration, you've got your velocity, and you've got your Km. 
So you can find all of those figures by looking at the graph, and that's why the Michaelis Minton graph is usually used. You can find them with the line Weaver Burke plot too, but it's a little bit trickier. So with that in mind, let's take a look at this question from the double AMC, and you can see how they kind of conceptually tested this equation. But first, what is the equation? Yeah, perfect. V is equal to V max times substrate concentration divided by Km plus the concentration of your substrate. Make sure that you memorize that, throw a flashcard into your rotation of this equation because it's probably going to be on your test. So taking a look at this question, it says assuming the amino acid transport protein complex examined in figure one follows standard michaelis minton kinetics, K sub T is equal to what? So it's kind of weird here because they're calling it K sub T, so that throws off a lot of students. But the important part is that you notice that this question is talking about michaelis minton kinetics. So here, this is a conceptual example of the MCAT testing michaelis minton kinetics, or at least, at least the math portion of it. And yeah, sometimes they will test math conceptually. So if I were to simplify this question like Maggie taught us to do, I would simplify it as which of these answer choices describes KM. So you're looking for something that says the substrate concentration at one half of Vmax. Going through these, A is saying that KT is equal to double the transport capacity maximum. So that's saying double Vmax, so maybe not. B is saying substrate concentration at one half Vmax, so I like B. B is the correct answer. C is saying the transport capacity at one half substrate, so that's saying your velocity at one half of your maximum substrate capacity, which is not a thing. You can have as much substrate as you want, it's just you will exceed saturation. Or substrate concentration at a third of transport rate, which again is wrong because remember Km is one half Vmax, or it's the substrate concentration at one half Vmax. So that's a conceptual example. You didn't even need the graph, but if you want to see it, this is what that graph looked like that they were referring to. Now it's very possible that they could have added some math to this question, so let's take a look at a question that I'm pulling directly from our IFD MCAT guide to show you what it looks like when the AMC wants to test you on math associated with michaelis minton kinetics. The question reads, in your summer research lab, you were asked to find why the drug your group is developing is functioning suboptimally. In your research, you note the drug only contains 3.75 moles of active substrate. Previous tests have identified the Vmax as 100 moles per second. Given the michaelis minton plot below, at what percentage of its capability is the drug functioning? So this question is kind of weird because it's asking for percentage of capability of functioning, and that is not in your michaelis minton question, right? Or your michaelis minton equation, right? So what do you do? Give up, change your career. No, this is a logical question. You're going to have to use the michaelis minton equation and then apply that to functioning capability. So let's figure out what they did give you. It says that we have 3.75 moles of substrate and it tells us that our Vmax has previously been identified as 100 moles per second. So that's how quickly this enzyme can convert things. And we'll look at Pac-Man as the enzyme. So he, his, his top speed is 100. Um, substrates converted per second, or moles of substrate, but we only have 3.75 moles. Now the other thing that we get is this plot. So if I'm looking at the michaelis minton equation, I know I've got V is equal to Vmax times S divided by Km plus S. Now what do I have? What did they give me? Well, they gave me S and they gave me Vmax. But they also gave me a plot. If I have a plot, then I can technically find Km, right? So let's look back at that graph that they gave us. Go down and find 50% of Vmax, which would be 50, and see where 50 moles per second crosses the line. See where it intercepts with the actual slope of our curve and trace that back down to the x-axis. And that tells us that that is how much substrate is required to get our enzyme functioning at one half of its Vmax. That looks to be like 1.25 moles and that is your Km. 
So now you also have your KM. So remember this question is saying, how suboptimal am I performing? Or what percentage of my capability am I reaching? So to do that, you'll have to figure out what you could possibly reach, what's your potential, which is Vmax, and then where you are and divide those by each other. So now we need to calculate velocity so that we can divide it from Vmax. We'll just plug that in with what we have. We see Vmax is 100 times 3.75 divided by our KM, which our graph showed us to be 1.25 plus 3.75 of a substrate concentration. Do that math, that gives you 375 divided by five, which is going to reduce down to 75 moles per second. Now, you are not quite done yet. Even though you have it da reduced down to 75 moles per second, it's saying what percentage of your capability are you reaching. So to do that, you would have to say V divided by V max, which is the same thing as saying 75 divided by 100, which is equal to 0.75 or 75% if they ask you the question in percentages. Just like I discussed in our Henderson Hasselbach math approach, they won't always ask it in this weird quirky way, but it is possible. And if you can do it like this, then you can definitely get it whenever it's worded like it was in your normal chemistry class. The IFD MCAT guidebook that I referenced earlier that I pulled this question from is available at the first link in the description and it contains a complete overview of the MCAT math. It shows you some of the high yield applications like Michaelis-Minton kinetics equation and it comes with a full equation sheet so that you're not blindsided by the MCAT. So go grab it if you need some help with the MCAT or if you just want to support us in the channel. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.